Now that you have serverless and your AWS account set up, there's a couple things that we need to do uh, to deploy the backend architecture. So inside of the backend folder, you'll notice that there are a couple of config files, some samples, and basically these are the main config pieces where we can set the region that we want our service to run in. So if you are in Europe, you might want to change this to one of the available regions. The uh, available Lambda regions are on the AWS docs. Uh, you want to plug in your repo username and uh, repo name. So for example, serverless is, is serverless slash serverless. Um, your GitHub webhook secret, this is just any text string that you want. So text string here. Um, and that is what validates that the webhook hitting your Lambda function is actually coming from GitHub. Um, and we're gonna need to plug that into GitHub in a second here. And then uh, if you want to avoid getting rate limited, uh, if you are running the setup multiple times or what have you, you can plug in an API token. Um, so if you create an API token in GitHub and plug that in, uh, you can use it there. Uh, and for requests, just plug in your GitHub username. This is just needed for requests to GitHub. So I'm just gonna type in David Wells. So that's really the config that we need. I'll just put in a random API key here. And I'm gonna show you guys how to plug these in uh, in another video. But once we actually have that set up, um, I have that set up. Uh, you you wanna rename this file from config prod example to just config prod and uh, it'll look exactly the same. And that's what we're actually gonna to use to deploy. So uh, one last thing that we need to do is actually uh, name what our uh, database is and like what this service is called. So let's go ahead and make this for the scope Git repo. So I'm gonna save that. Uh, and before I actually deploy this, I just wanna show you guys. So inside of my uh, AWS account here, we have some databases. Uh, but there's no database named scope, uh, open or close. So we're actually gonna create that now. And because we have uh, configured all of our stuff um, and I'm using that repo, uh, we're actually gonna pull those in. I'm gonna pull in data from the serverless repository because it has data. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and spin this up. And um, what this will do is basically these are custom variables that are being referenced Throughout here, uh, we can see our different functions that are registered. So we actually have five functions registered. Three of them are exposed via an HTTP endpoint, one post and two gets. And then we have a database, uh, two databases defined. Um, and this is what's gonna tell serverless deploy um, what to tell AWS to actually provision for us. So let's go ahead and jump over to the command line and do that. So let me clear this. So if I type in serverless deploy, hit enter. So what this is gonna do is gonna, it's gonna spin up the stack for us and it's gonna actually create those resources that we have specified. So it's gonna go in and it's gonna create a new project um, and it's going to create a new database table for us that uh, we're using some variables here. So it's gonna be called scope um, prod open items and closed items. So now the stack is finished and what we have just done is we've created all of the resources in our AWS account. So what that's created is one post endpoint. This is actually what we're going to plug into GitHub uh, to listen to webhooks and then two get endpoints. And this is what the actual front end of the application listens to. And you can see the five functions that we've set up. So cool. And if you ever need this information again, you can type in SLS info and it will go ahead and pull that back down for you if you need to reference the uh, live API endpoints. But uh, cool. So let me jump over to my dashboard here and you can see that we have uh, our new databases created. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the scope prod database. And you can see that there's nothing in here. So one of the setup steps, if you do want to do this, um, if you plug in the webhook, things will trickle into your database over time. But I set up a handy um, 
basically set up a function to pull those in for you. So I'm just gonna type in serverless invoke dash F for the function, and I'm gonna type setup, hit enter. And what this is doing is actually going out and it's, uh, this is really the only time that we touch the GitHub API. It's pulling in basically the 258 open items and pull requests from the repository. So now if I refresh this, we can see that we have all of our items in our database. And this is what our UI can now query and um, take a look at. So that about does it for the setup of the back end. Um, you do wanna take these two get endpoints and plug them into the front end folder. Um, so you can make those Ajax requests. Um, and in the next video, I'm going to uh, show you guys how to plug in the GitHub webhook URL into GitHub.